Hi everyone, this is going to be lesson one, uh, up and down or down and up, day two. So it's the second part of the lesson one. And it's going to start on page 12, so it's going to be 1.2. So if you click on this, mm -hmm. again, our uh, learning target for today is I will learn to write, we're going to continue this, learn to write quadratic functions to model context. I will learn to interpret key features of quadratic functions in terms of a context. And I will learn to identify the domain and range of quadratic functions in their context. So again, we're uh, looking at domain and range again. So there's quite a few things that we're going to be looking at today. And I will know that I am successful when I can write and graph quadratic function in a given context and explain key features. So by the end of today, you should know how to uh, know those key features. All right. Again, the key uh, keywords here. Okay. And um, instead of doing a Nearpod, we are actually going to go into our class notebook. So that would be this button right here, or this link, I guess you could say. And if you have not logged in already, it just goes right here to sign into OneNote. If you did not log into Canvas through your launch pad, you need to do that. Um, that's probably going to be the least troublesome. So you're going to just sign into OneNote, and it should automatically sign in for you. Um, so here, uh, if you have not downloaded yet, um, you can download it for free. Um, since if you're doing this asynchronous, you totally have time for that. So you can do that and you can just pause and then just set it all up. If not, you can just do it online. Just click that and it'll just open another uh, tab. And then you'll have your own student notebook in here. So you could just write in things. I will be able to see it. So um, <laughs> don't write things you don't want me to see, uh, but it'll just be for you, for your eyes and my eyes, I can just, if I want to look through them. And then you're going to go into this content library. Okay, and in this content library, you're going to see uh, period three, five, and seven. So you choose the oh, oops, didn't mean that. So you choose the one that you want to, the, whichever one is your period. I'd go with that one. All right, and so I am going to go to mine. And so uh, for today, uh, we did uh, page twelve and thirteen. So I'm looking down at my book as well. Um, and so we talked about the employees handshaking. So uh, if you have not done that already, make sure you're doing this. Pause. Don't look at the stuff. Don't look at the answers yet um, until you've done it yourself. Uh, that you're, that's probably going to give you the best results for that. And then uh, draw the figures. A lot of people drew different kinds of figures. And here, let me see if I could draw one for you. So some people did. Uh, for five employees, there was at least five dots. And they're all going to be handshaking. So this is uh, pre-COVID, apparently, because <laughs> we would not do this anymore right now. Maybe like distance high-fiving, <laughs> right? How many of those would we have all together? So you'd be like, okay, so there's one here, one handshake here, two handshakes here, three handshakes here, four handshakes here, five handshakes here. Then you have six, seven. And so this guy is hand now shaking hands with everybody. But this guy, I'm going to do it in a different color still needs to shake hands with uh, this person over here. So that was, well, how, I lost track. So it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we already have this one. Then this guy has already done it, 10 right here. So that is gonna be 10 handshakes for five people. And so that's why we wrote five in there, right? And you would do the same thing for six people, for six employees and for seven employees, okay? And then we found the equation. They, there's a lot of different really good patterns that people found. And it would be really cool if you could find one too. And if you can't find one, <laughs> then uh, you can look off of this one. Um, there was uh, somebody had said, you know, if you add these two numbers, the top and the bottom number, it will equal this number on the bottom, how many, the number of handshakes. And I was like, oh, I, I did not realize that. So that's really cool. That was a cool pattern that was seen. Maybe you can find one that I've not seen before. I'm sure you can. Um, three plus three is six, four plus four is a uh, four plus six is 10, five plus 10 is 15, six plus 15 is 21. So we can assume that the next one for eight people, we would have 28 handshakes. Um, and some people notice that, oh, this is plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six. Yeah, a lot of different patterns. So this is the function that we uh, came up with. So H of N, so number of handshakes, given the, the number of employees is N times N minus two over, oh, did I say two over here? I'm sorry. That was a mistake. Nobody stopped me in class. This, and just erase it like it was never there. Didn't say that. Only people who watch this video are going to know this. It's a secret. 
All right, so that's going to be uh, n times n minus 1 divided by 2, okay? And then we talked about how, uh, whether it's open up or open down, and the big thing that we noticed that once we simplified these equations, this one was from, the one on the left was from uh, yesterday's lesson where it's about the dog in the enclosure, remember the, where the dog could run around, and that area, and so it was going to be graphed this way. If you did not watch that video, make sure you go do that right now, asynchronous time. And then, so we found that uh, the a right here, this this number, the, so the coefficient in front of the s squared is negative, and then this coefficient in front of the n squared is positive, and so we know that that may that seemed to make a difference here. So when it's negative, it opens down, and when it's positive, it opens up. And one thing, uh, as I said in class, uh, my pre oh no, my I had a pre -cal. we had a different class. My calculus teacher told me if it's a positive in front, then it's happy face, right? So that opens up, we call it open up. And if it's negative, then it is sad face or open down. Okay, and, um, and the only other thing that uh, we needed to talk about was the domain and range of the problem situation. So I'm just gonna add it on here. Um, so the domain, we, you could start technically at zero. So I'm actually gonna just write zero because you can have zero people, that is a thing. So I'm gonna say zero because we did say the stipulation of as long as x is an integer right and uh and also y is going to be zero because the smallest we could have is zero handshakes we can't have like negative handshakes that doesn't make sense so it's going to be zero all the way to uh the positive numbers and so it's going to be zero is less than or equal to y which is less than or equal to eight and y again these uh, these quotations just mean that it's the same as above so y is an integer and the, the uh, symbol for integer, uh, we actually can write it like this. So with the little double line like that, that's a Z. So the Z with that double line like that. Oh, my contact, sorry. All right, so that's another way to say integer is if you don't want to write that down, you can just say this number or this, the Z. Okay, and that, uh, that indicates that it's an integer. All right, um, and if, if it was for the pro, uh, for the whole, the function in general, so if we're looking at just the function, so the domain, remember, is talking about the x values, right? So what is, so the x, if we go all the way to the left, and notice uh, that this, uh, the parabola, it goes, it's keep on going to the left slightly, but it's still going. So x can be any number. If you can think about it in the, in, in terms of this equation, in this function, this n could be any number. There's no restriction. This could be negative a million. It could be negative five million, right? Same thing with the positive side. It could be positive one trillion, right? It's one trillion times one trillion minus one divided by two. It's going to be a really big number, but it's still a number, right? So that's one way we can check. And so the domain is going to be all real numbers. So we go negative x is less than, oh, negative infinity is less than x which is less than infinity. And then same thing with the range. So range here, if you notice, you're like, oh, that's a minimum. Well, we remember we talked about that's a minimum because that's, as somebody said, that's the lowest that it can go. So the lowest that can go is negative, we wrote it right here, negative 0.125. So that's the lowest it can go and it can keep on going higher. So we're gonna say that the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 0 0.125, okay? And that's what it would be for the, for the function itself, okay? And not in context. All right, um, so if you look right here, um, the 1.3, I'm gonna have you guys do that asynchronously. So I'll have a video for that too, all right? But that's just a preview of what you're gonna be doing tomorrow. All right, I will talk to you guys later, bye.